Hey everybody, Austin back again. Today we're going to be taking a casual look at Atari carts for the Atari Jaguar. Now, the, a, a casual look at is a series of casual reviews I do, or have done. I don't really do them much anymore, but for those of you guys tuning into my channel just now for the first time, or you're a new subscriber, uh, this is a series I used to do all the time on this channel. Uh, I have had some requests recently you know, asking, hey, uh, can you do some more of these videos? Uh, why haven't you done these videos? And uh, so, yeah, um, this is actually the last day I'm going to be having Atari cars for the Jaguar. I'm actually trading it away. It is leaving my possession. Um, so I figured, hey, uh, what better time to do another casual review, but with Atari cars and the Jaguar. I will probably never own this game again. It's a ridiculously expensive game now. This is going to cost you over $100 for a complete copy like this. On average, it seems like they're going between $120 and $140 right now on eBay. Now, I don't like using eBay as a baseline for prices, but the fact of the matter is, for games like this, you don't really have any other places you can look for prices because it's a very uncommon game. It's also on the Jaguar. Most of its games are kind of uncommon compared to your in NES or Super Nintendo games. And yeah, probably never going to own this game again because it's so expensive. Is it worth the price as is out of the box? No. I'm going to go ahead and just start off with that. No. If you're going to drop $120 to $140 and you really, really want to drop it on one single game, I can think of plenty of other games like on the Sega Saturn, like <clears throat> Radiant Silver Gun, that would be actually kind of worth the money. But Atari Karts, you know, even if it was a $50 game complete, I would have a hard time recommending it at that price because there are other Jaguar games that are a lot better that you can get for the same price or less, like Tempest 2000 or Raiden or something like that. Um, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Super Burnout, awesome game. I love Super Burnout. Um, so, yeah. But Atari Cards is not necessarily a bad game. If it was a twenty to thirty to forty dollar game complete, I could I could wholeheartedly recommend this game. But at the going rate it goes for right now, I do not recommend this game at all. But if you say have access to a flash cart, or if you have access to emulation, or if you somehow stumble across this game in the wild and it's like twenty bucks because the guy that priced it doesn't you know, know what he's doing, then go ahead and snap it up. I think it's a solid game for that price. Now, Atari Karts actually has some decent graphics. As you can see, I've just let the demo roll out. And it's got some colorful visuals. It's got, uh, you know, a sort of Mode 7 style, you know, graphical effect for the play field, similar to, say, Super Nintendo racing games, but it's a lot sharper. You know, everything is crisp and clear. Um, Atari Karts also has this sort of, uh, it simulates hills, so the playfield will actually go up and down. It's actually kind of hard to see with, uh, on this ice playfield here, but it's actually a cool little pseudo 3D effect. And, um, it's got some, it's got some cool things like that. Um, it also controls fairly tight. It is, uh, you know, it plays well. Some of the power-ups aren't very good, and, um... The music really isn't very good either. It just does not fit my taste at all. It, it's not energetic. It's not even really that melodic in a good way. It just nothing is really catchy about the music for me. And it just doesn't fit the, fit the game at all, uh, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's actually got a decent amount of tracks. It's got a decent amount of characters and carts you can pick. And it's a, a decent little game overall. So with that said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I'll sort of explain it as I, I play it. So when you first jump in, you've got this part that says select a challenge, and this is basically your difficulty mode. And what I'll do is I'll just put it on Miracle, which is, the I believe, the hardest option right now in terms of difficulty. But if you hit the option key on the Jaguar control, as you can see, I got the Jag pad right here, options on the right. Um, you can actually choose uh, your, your visual options, which is either hill mode or flat mode. Flat mode is like Mario Kart in the Super Nintendo, where it's just one flat plane. But if you do hill mode, which is what I recommend, is the track sort of simulates a 3D effect and it goes up and down and it's a pretty cool little effect. It's not mind blowing, but it actually looks good. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave it on hill mode. Uh, you can change your controls and whatnot here. Um, 
the, the controls are, are pretty basic here. Uh, if you have a, a pro controller, I believe uh, the shoulder keys actually are mapped to turn sharper. And I believe that functionality is actually mapped to the uh, some of the number keys down here. Because that's really all the pro controller does. It takes these keys and maps them to another three buttons up top and shoulder keys. And um, so yeah, controls are pretty basic. You don't, you don't need the sharp turning functionality though. So don't think it's like necessary like it is in some say Super Nintendo racers like F-Zero or something like that. Um, you can also change your name and that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and just hit uh, Miracle and jump right into it. Now you got some uh, characters you could pick as. Uh, some of these people are actually boss characters that uh, you unlock depending on how well you play. You go through certain cups and you can unlock some, some boss characters. And they are, they've got maxed out stats. As you can see on the left hand side you've got stats. Um, and for those of you guys that don't know, there's this one character here called Bentley Bear, and he was actually a pseudo Atari mascot back in the day. He was in Crystal Castles, and um, so he was a very familiar character back in the, uh, the early 80s. So we'll go ahead and just pick the best character. And uh, you've got different cups here that you could play through. And, um, and uh, the fourth cup, unfortunately, I have not unlocked yet, so... We'll go ahead and uh, we'll do the Tempest Cup, and yeah, we'll go from there. Slight load time, slight pause there. So now we're basically in the game, and Atari Karts is, unlike other kart racing games, it is more so, first and foremost, a racing game than it is um, anything else. In other racing games, um, there's usually combat involved, and Atari Cars does not have combat at all. So when you, if you've never played this game before, and you're thinking, "Oh, Atari Cars must be like Mario Kart," no, it's actually not really that much like Mario Kart, aside from the racing. It's got some boost pads here and there, which you know Mario Kart had. It's got some little, you know, little jumps like I just did right there, and. Um, that's really where the similarities end. Yeah, it's a kart racing game, but it's mostly about the racing. And, you know, when I first played this game uh, several years back, I was like, you know, I don't really like this game at all. It's I was expecting Mario Kart. I was expecting combat. I was expecting, honestly, faster action um, and an action-packed experience. And Atari Karts is not that. Um, but... When you get past that, and if you like just racing games, and if you like to just race, it's actually a, a, a solid little game. Once you get the track memorization factor down, and you start blazing through these tracks and getting your best times and things like that, it's decent. Um, but um, one, one thing I was going to get to, though, um, in that whole spiel is it's not like Mario Kart in terms of the action and stuff like that. It's mostly just about racing, uh, but one of the other issues this game has, and one of the biggest differences, is that the courses are absurdly short in this game. Uh, as you saw there, it only took me about a minute and a quarter to finish that whole race. So we did five laps in uh, one minute and 15 seconds flat. It was um, That's how short pretty much all of these tracks are in the game. Um, and, you know, that's another issue you'll probably have to get over you know and really good racing games it usually takes you at least a few minutes to get through a track there's you know there's a sense of i don't know i don't even know how to explain it but uh the tracks here are finished extremely quickly in this game and oh geez i just got the reverse power up and that's a terrible power up in the game another one of the issues in the game is uh the power up system is not very good as is uh, but I'll get I'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, the, the courses end absurdly fast, and that's one of the issues this game has. But uh, you know, aside from that, when you get used to that, you learn the tracks. It's it can actually be a pretty fun little racing game. And uh, so yeah. Now you know I was saying this game doesn't have any combat to it. Um, like Mario Kart, but it does actually have power-ups as you saw. I've been picking up some power-ups as I've been explaining this game. And some of the power-ups are, are wildly useful. Uh, one of them is a, uh, a rabbit. If you pick the rabbit up, you're like two or three times as fast as you normally would be. And it's a really useful power-up. Um, 
You've also got the steering wheel you could pick up. And basically what happens is it removes the friction on the track. I believe, at least I believe that's how it works. And you can turn sharper and faster. So you don't slide around as much when you're turning. Um, unfortunately, there are other bad power-ups though. Um, uh, opposite to the rabbit, you can actually pick up a turtle. And the turtle slows you down. Uh, which there was actually just a rabbit there to the left and I missed it. Uh, the turtle slows you down. There was a turtle right there. And so that is a pain. And there's another power-up, the red power-up. Uh, it reverses your controls, completely reverses your controls. And that is just the worst power-up in the game. I don't know why the developers, oh geez, I don't know why the developers thought it would be a good idea to keep that power-up in this game, um, but they did. So here's the steering wheel right here. And you can sort of turn sharper. Just like so. Kind of, that was a bad example. This is, the, I, I really don't actually like this track that much. There are a couple tracks in the game where it's just one big uh, track where it's just, oh jeez. And this is another one of the issues. Look at this. You can just totally get stuck on a wall like this. I'm holding B right now, mind you. Like I'm trying to go. And I can't go. I'm literally stuck on the pixel. I'm turning, turning, turning. There we go. Finally got off the freaking wall. So watch this. I'll, I'll do it again. Oh, no, look at that. I went through that one that time. So let's try to... That is weird. Some walls are... are... Look at that. I'm stuck on that one. But the wall I had just slammed into before that... I went through a few pixels, so it's like some some corners are worse than others in terms of getting stuck on them. Like I just went through a few pixels on that turn, and so yeah, the game is just you know in terms of, of you know the tracks they're not very polished. And what I was gonna say about this track is just one big like rectangle or not rect <laughs> ninety degree angle turn after another, and it's just not. It's not very good track design, in my opinion. Yeah, Mario Kart has some stuff like that, but your turning ability was a lot better in that game. Um, it was much better in Mario Kart, actually. And um, and tracks like that were mainly reserved, for the most part, for like later tracks in the game. You know, they weren't just... They, it wasn't the third track that you went to. And, um, you know, Atari Karts could have used more traditional curvy turns that... You know, they sort of ease you into the turn. They aren't just, you know, straight 90 degree angle turns. Especially ones with very thin corridors, which makes it very difficult to actually uh, turn without... Like, right, this one over here, you really have to start turning uh, wide from the opposite end of the track before you even get into the turn. And yeah, you know, that's really not a problem in the grand scheme of things because the goal is, is to play each track more and more. And, you know, the more you play it, you know, the more you get used to, you know, how you have to turn at, at certain parts of each track. So it says retry. We'll go ahead and retry it. But uh, I, I don't think it was really great level design. It was just kind of, it didn't seem like some of these tracks were really that well thought out, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. So here's going to be our, our, our big turn here. So what I'm going to do is stay to the right and, oh, that's not it. It's this one coming up, I think. So, nope, not that one. It's this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, nope, can't do that one because there's a block sitting in the middle of the road. And there's another one. See? Not very good design. I don't even know why those blocks really needed to be there. But the point is, is I needed to go out far and, and turn in to make that turn a little bit easier. So, but yeah, Atari Karts has some major flaws like that. It has a really bad power-up system. It's just, why is that block even there? Was that really even necessary? Like, not necessary at all. Um, but as you look, if you look in the background, the graphics are actually fairly solid. They're not too bad. Uh, it's got multiple layers of scrolling in the back and, you know, the background keeps scrolling along like that as you make turns and so forth. And that's solid. The, the track graphics themselves aren't bad. Maybe not that great for 1995 standards, considering this was when, uh, everything was going 3D. And, uh, so it's really not going to be that impressive by 95 standards, but it still looks respectable. Uh, by two-dimensional standards for, for that time period. It's solid. And, um... But, uh, yeah. I don't even really know what else to say about this game, guys. Atari Karts, you know, like I said, it's not a game that's... Look, I'm totally stuck. 
it's Atari Karts is not a game that's worth the price tag. Even if you're a hardcore Jaguar collector, I mean, if you really want to spend 120 plus dollars for this game, you know, be my guest. But from a gameplay perspective, it's not worth that kind of money one bit. It's not that great of a game. It's a decent little game if you can get it at a respectable price. But uh, it doesn't have the staying power of other kart racing games. It's just, it's not as much fun outright, in my opinion. It doesn't have really a great two-player mode. Mostly thanks to the battle mechanics being, you know, gone in this game. Um, it just has a basic two-player racing mode. Which, you know, if you guys really like racing, it's fun. But it's just, it won't have the staying power of something like Mario Kart. And, um... As a solo experience, it's a solid little racing game if you can get past some of the problems like getting stuck on corners. Wow, I'm like halfway in and I wasn't getting stuck. That's just, that's, that's bad. That's bad. There's uh, very little attention to detail. Like, if, I, if, if I'm getting stuck on this little bit right here, look at that. How come I don't get stuck when my cart moves into here? I'm not stuck right here. Look at this. This is just terrible attention to detail I don't get stuck on that but I get stuck on that right there it doesn't make any sense and that's one of the biggest problems with this game um, but the more you play through it the less that actually happens the less that should happen and it's gonna ask me to retry and end but I'm not gonna play it anymore so so that's Atari carts for you guys um, in terms of Atari Jaguar racing games um, oh, man it's sort of in the middle of the pack. I mean, you have games like Club Drive, which are terrible. Games like Checkered Flag, which are terrible. Uh, but then you also have games like Super Burnout, which are awesome. I don't want to say amazing, but I'll say amazing. I think Super Burnout is an awesome game. Um, and then you sort of have like Power Drive Rally, uh, which is a lot more entertaining than this game, in my opinion. And it doesn't cost nearly as much. Um, but for kart racing games, what else are you going to get? Atari Karts is pretty much it. Uh, is it worth the price? As I said, no, not at all. Uh, definitely not worth the price. But um, if you can find it cheap, worth picking up. Um, if you do end up finding it and you do get it, it's, you, you need to practice this game. Um, I, I think Atari Karts is it's the kind of game that just leaves a really bad first impression. Uh, again, solid graphics. Uh, solid controls. There's no dude in the cart right now. That's kind of interesting. Solid controls, but it's got poor music, uh, kind of iffy track design, bad power-ups, and um, as I showed you on that last track we played, it's just little it, a little glitches like you getting stuck on a corner will be extremely, extremely frustrating the first time you play it. But again, the more you play it, the more you learn the tracks, the more you avoid issues like that, and the, the better you get at the game, the less that's going to happen, and the more enjoyable the game's going to become. So, but that's it, guys. That's a casual look at Atari cards for the Atari Jaguar. And yeah, I'll be back with some regular Let's Plays sometime soon. And uh, for those of you guys uh, just tuning into my channel right now, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I mostly do Let's Plays these days, so uh, if I had done a Let's Play of this game, I would have just tried to go through... A couple of cups straight through so if you like that sort of thing uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, I'll be back with some more content sometime soon so until then guys take care